Could this keyboard right here, this futuristic seaboard as it's called, be the inspiration for a new UI design trend in 2020? Hey everybody, what's up? Gary Simon here. So today we're gonna to be taking a look at a possible UI design trend in 2020, one that might become the most popular and prevalent, and that is called pneumorphism. So that's a play on word. Basically, it's new as in N-E-W plus skewmorphism. And skewmorphism has been around for a long time in a lot of different forms. Basically, skewmorphism is integrating familiar real world objects uh, into your UI designs. And this is a different play on it. And I'll show you exactly what it looks like in terms of some recent examples on Dribbble and also how to create it yourself in Adobe XD or Figma and also how to actually make it work in HTML and CSS. So first, make sure to subscribe because there's a bunch more tutorials and content coming here in 2020 and let's get started. Before we begin, Linode makes it easy and affordable to host your website, your portfolio, your online store, and more on whatever technology stack you use. Getting up and running is fast and easy with one-click app installs like WordPress and Drupal. With back-end access to your server, customization and scaling options are all but limitless. If you just need something small like an online portfolio to showcase your work, Linode has you covered. If you need to manage tons of clients' websites and reliably serve them to millions of visitors, Linode can do that too. So sign up using the link below in the description to get $20 in credit on your new Linode account. So I came across this article here, new morphism in user interfaces. And I basically they outline, you know, where this came from, perhaps a skew morphism, of course, which is just emulating real world objects in UI design. Uh, but it really points out that it all started, uh, at least became popular because I've seen this done years ago, um, at least became popular here with this design on dribble.com, which I got on the front page, I believe, had a ton of comments and all that. And you can see it's strongly characterized by these UI containers and the UI elements such as buttons having basically two different shadows. One's a highlight, in this case on the upper left, indicating the light source is coming from this angle, and then an actual shadow, a dark shadow on the bottom right portion. And so you can see it just makes for a very soft UI. And in fact, if you probably search on Dribbble for soft UI, you'll probably come across some older examples that utilize this technique. Um, just to show you, these, all these up here, these tabs are from Dribbble and they're within the last 30 days, many of them within the past week or two, uh, because it's starting to become a trend, really popular. So you can see an example here, the buttons here have that soft uh, UI, new morphism look on them. Right here, this this one has a, a, a ton, almost every element, this little redesign of Google or Gmail has them as well. We have this little cassette tape illustration, um, this blue variation, and you could apply this to other colors, obviously, and dark mode, which I'm gonna show you how to in a second. And yeah, you can see people are just going nuts about this right now. So let me show you how to actually achieve this on your own using your favorite design application. All right, so I'm here in Adobe XD. You can use whatever uh, alternative you wish, uh, Figma. Actually, it'd probably be a little bit easier in Figma because I believe in Figma, you can at least have multiple shadows on the same element, which we can't do here in Adobe XD, but no big deal anyways. Um, so I'm just starting here with a mobile uh, artboard. Doesn't really matter what you choose. We're gonna choose a background color, um, yeah, right around there. And then I'm gonna have kind of just like a, a mobile mobile artboard inside of the artboard, if that makes sense. All right, so we're just gonna bring that in. And then we're gonna give this a very uh, light background color. I think E, 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 E will work quite well. All right, so next up, we're gonna have like a, a UI container of some sort that will hold other information. So we're gonna pull out yeah, maybe something right around there. Get rid of the damn border that Adobe XD just loves adding by default, and there's nothing I can do about it, at least from what I understand. Um, yeah, we'll have some rounded edges. The, the rounded borders I uh, kind of help the effect um, a little bit more than just having uh, no borders or straight edges rather. And so the background color works best if it's the same as the background color here that it's sitting on. So then of course it disappears, but we're gonna add our shadow. So for this one, I think I'll just do, um, we'll just do nine. This is gonna be the darker one. So on X, it's gonna be nine, Y will be nine, and our blur, we'll make that nine too. 
All right, so here it is, pretty boring, but now we get to spice it up. Here at this point, if whatever application you support allows adding multiple shadows on the same element, you can do that or just duplicate the layer. And then we'll just reverse. So this would be negative nine, negative nine, and there we go. Of course, at this point, it looks very silly. So we need to change up this color here to white. And you can either choose to go all like full opacity at full white, which I think is a little bit much in this case, or down just a little bit here in the opacity slider. And there you go. And of course, it's completely up to you. Like if you want to select both of these, uh, you can change the blur radius down. So maybe it's, it doesn't come out so much. Uh, not the blur radius, uh, but rather probably the uh, X and Y values. But because they're different, it's a little bit um, tough to change them very quickly. But that is basically the effect uh, right here. And so you can also apply color to this. Um, you can do a dark uh, a dark mode version, very simple. So we would just take, um, let's take our background. We'll make this like almost black. We'll take this one. We'll make it maybe that color. Remember, we're gonna take the fill, make it that same color right there. And also the rectangle two underneath it. All right, and then finally, we'll take the one with the lighter shadow, which is the top one, and change the value just above, just to where you can barely see it. And there you go. That's how you can very quickly create a dark mode version um, like that. My opinion, I think negative nine um, in, in nine pixels for the, the values is a little bit much as it sticks out just a tad bit too much. Uh, but nonetheless, you could still do the same exact thing. Um, we'll come over here with other shapes um, as you wish. So let's take a uh, no border there. We'll do this one more time for the fun of it. And we'll go ahead and have our shadow. This time, let's just do six. All right. And then duplicate that. Good. Negative six here. Negative six. And then bump that up to white, bump this up a little bit more. And there we go. I think that shadow part is probably coming in a little bit too strong. So we can take the opacity down. And then if you want, you can go real crazy. You know, then you have multiple inside of each other. Very cool stuff. So let me show you how to actually get this in code in CSS. And it's very simple. In fact, I, I just did a video on the box shadow property. Uh, I think it was my last video um, and it'll tie in perfectly for achieving this in front end development. All right, so here I have, uh, this is a very, it looks very blank, but that's only because our div class container is the same color as our uh, background here. And if we head on over to our SAS, all I have is two rule sets, just have our body element, you know, I'm getting up our E, 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 E background. Um, and then our container, and it, of course we haven't applied any color, background color to it, so it's gonna be um, transparent by default. But the way we make this effect work, very simple, we use the box shadow property with two different values, comma separated. So box shadow, we have, uh, we'll do negative 12 pixels, so we'll do the light version, so on X and Y, 12 pixels of blur, uh, zero for the spread, and then RGBA, 255, 255, 255, which is for white. And then the opacity will be uh, one. So we'll make it really, it's 100% white. Um, then we're gonna put a comma. Let's push this down here. We'll shift alt and down arrow key, duplicate that and end it here. Except this time we take this off and then this one make zero, zero, zero for black, but we don't want it completely black, of course. So we're gonna put 0 0.03. All right, so now we save it. We go back to our preview. Let me get that out. And there we go. We have our pneumorphism soft UI container. How exciting. All right, so the big question today is, what do you think about this trend? Do you personally like it? And also, do you think will it become maybe perhaps the most popular UI design trend that we see here in 2020. I'm sure many people will butch it and will get sick of it pretty quickly. All right, I'll see you guys soon, goodbye.